Okay, well it's a hot day out here and uh, taking a moment uh, with my buddy Jeremy, who's he knows far more about motorcycles than I do. Uh, so he's going to kind of take it over here and show us what are some of the motorcycle, scooter options, pros and cons of each. Uh, no, I just uh, bought so. my second bike because I just like bikes and because uh, my first bike had some challenges. So one option is to buy a used bike. Uh, one benefit to that right away is that it's already registered in most cases and you can transfer it and be on the road legally. Now if you buy a new bike you're going to be best case scenario one month probably two months and maybe three months to actually have that legal on the road. This is one that would be around $600 if you could find it. This is a Suzuki scooter. It's air cooled. I don't know for sure. It's either a 110 or a 125. It'll do everything you need to do. You know, something like this, maybe four years old. Uh, you know, it might have a couple quirks on it, like maybe the speedometer doesn't work, but something like this will get you down the road without any problems. And uh, you just gotta dig a little bit. Facebook Marketplace is the place here. That's where it's all going on uh, to find you scooters. Now, another scooter kind of like this, it's really common, actually two, the Honda Beat and the Yamaha Mio. Now, personally, I think the Beat's better as far as longevity, but there are so many of these uh, Yamaha Mios here, and they are pretty much like this. In fact, there's one right next to it. That's a Honda Beat. And then, so this is gonna be an air-cooled engine. And then another one would be the Yamaha Mio, which is essentially Yamaha's version of the same thing. So all three of these bikes, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, these are all gonna be 110 cc's, the 125 cc's, they're gonna be twist and go, you have one gear, it works well, and, uh, and it's a scooter. So that is essentially what you're kinda, kinda working with. Now a new, Honda Beat or new Mio is going to start around 70,000 pesos. Now so, another option that you can do if you're going to be on off road some and you like to shift gears is the one I just bought. This is a new Honda XRM. Now what this is, it's a, it's a 125 air cooled engine. I actually don't feel the heat of that engine at all when I'm riding. Uh, not an issue at all. It, it was just under 1400 and then I got this bag which is essentially a fanny pack wrapped it to the handlebars it was like four dollars I can put a lot of stuff in there cell phone holder but no charger I don't really need one that was about five dollars and then I keep a backpack under the seat sometimes and you can see there's some suspension travel here and you have some knobby tires, which they really go on the road nicely. So I can really move up and down a bumpy road. Uh, there's been many times I find myself on a dirt road that I wouldn't want my road bike on. And this one just seems to soak it right up. Um, now when I say it's a, a shifter, what we've got is it's a semi-automatic. So no clutch. So you just one down, that's first gear, second, third, fourth, and then if you come to a stop, you just do one hard press and you're back to neutral again. Or you can go back, downshift through the gears, and it's just all automatic. You don't have to do any clutch work. So you have the United States, this would not be what anyone would call a big bike. It's 200 cc's. It's a Kawasaki branded bike, although it's actually from an Indian company that I can't remember the name of. So what I liked about this and this kind of bike is I just feel more secure on a bike like this. I can wrap my legs around the tank and I'm kind of one with the, the bike. So I'm holding on here, I'm holding on here, and if I hit a dog, which is a re very real possibility here, I'm probably going to be able to stay on the bike, where on my other one, there's nothing to hold on to when you're on it. 
you're just kind of holding on to the handlebars and you're sitting on it. And so if you hit something, you're going to be catapulted over the handlebars. Now that's not a big deal to a lot of people. And it may be in my head more than anything, but you know, it's something that I do think about. This will go about 85 miles per hour pretty comfortably and easy. Not that you should in the Philippines pretty much anywhere. And this new was 125,000 without any of the accessories that I've got on it. Um, those were extra, of course. So that was about 20, 2,200, 2,300. You know, brand yeah. new, full warranty. You can get some big bikes here. There are some, almost anything you want. And there's, um, you know, everything from 500 cc's on up. But prices are, like the United States, mm -hmm. on the bigger bikes, probably more. Now these smaller bikes, you can't get something like this for $1,400 in the United States. You can't get anything like that new for $2,300 in the United States. But big bikes are more rare here and they're usually imported. Now, there are what is called a business bike here. Now, these are the bikes that you normally would see them put a sidecar on or basically a structure around it and they're going to move people or things. Uh, Kawasaki's got one uh, called the CT100 or 125 or 150, CT150. Those range from 47,000 to 53,000 new if you just get them plain. But we're talking a clutch. And, and my big bike has a clutch too. It's a six speed manual with a clutch. But these are gonna be simple, like a four or five speed with a clutch. And they're gonna look like a motorcycle from the 1970s. And they probably basically are those designs being rebuilt here. So I know that Kawasaki that I just named, that's built here in the Philippines. That's why it's so cheap. Then you have the Honda TMX125 Alpha. That's 57,000, just a hair over $1,000. And then if you want to get something back to the scooters, there's another option a lot of people like, and it's the, the Honda ADV. Um, there's really nothing quite like it. It's basically an on off-road scooter, light off-road. Uh, they just came out with a 160. That's going to cost 165,000 pesos, so you're looking at 32, 3300. Or you can go with the 150, which isn't quite as fancy, and that's um, going to be just under 3,000. Now I happen to see one over here, so somebody you know put this on here. But essentially, this is going to be something that you can do some light off-roading with, and the ride quality is just phenomenal on these. They're really really nice units I almost got one where I got stuck on it again though was that if I'm really going to use something like this bigger and more powerful I want to wrap my legs around the gas tank like I showed on my Kawasaki Rouser this here is the rental bike next to it where we're at these are about 70,000 and it's just kind of supposed to be a throwback thing it's a Honda a Honda uh, I don't know how many PCs it is, but it looks like it's an air-cooled engine. Very reliable. So you have a lot of variety on different styles of scooters here. There are uh, a lot of choices under 160 cc's, and the prices are really good because that's the the volume sellers here. The volume ones that are built so those are just some of the choices um, every brand has quite a few and we've uh, added a link um, I don't necessarily recommend that chain of dealers but their website will give a really good rundown of all the different models that you could do okay well there you go uh, the link will be in the description and in the top comment uh, I believe it's for do Sam or I call him Sam the duck and uh, they're, they're a franchise uh, motorcycle f uh, dealership that's around different islands. But they do have a lot of good information. So I hope you find that helpful. And if you got anything to add, uh, just put it in the comments. See you guys later.